welcome to the CEO Pulse Podcast, where you get the real, the raw, and the mind of entrepreneurship. <laughs> Today, we are sitting down with Miss Annie Dragon Nova. What's up, Annie? Thanks for being with us. Uh, not much. It's just been, just been a heck of a day for so far. You're killing it. You're, I mean, you guys are doing so much with the business that you and your partners have. Yep. And, um, and I mean, you guys are keep stepping it up a notch and leveling up on a regular basis. Um, I want to tap into all of that stuff and ask you how you do it at a personal level. Okay. But also, I want to backtrack a little bit and then just see where your entrepreneur journey began. All so. right. So, um, I didn't even know this until, I want to say, this past Thanksgiving. Uh, my mom was going over. We were kind of just talking <clears> about <throat> how we all started, mm -hmm. some fun memories um, from Bulgaria. And she she pretty much told me that the kin we have Kinder eggs and the Kinder eggs have toys and ours were a little bit different back in the day, but the toys were a little bit bigger and you can put them together, and I would take those Kinder toys and I would sell them to my friends. So that's kind of like where hmm. my Kinder story kind of like my entrepreneurial journey started. And I want to say I was according to my parents I was around like a six to seven year old. Um, I don't remember. Um, much of it but that's kind of how it started it transitioned to like me selling like uh doll clothes and furniture that i'd make at home and then i'd sell it to my friends um <laughs> and then once we moved here uh it was selling oranges lemons grapefruits with like a with a grocery store cart <laughs> just on the street so i think that's where like that entrepreneurial spirit kind of came in but also because i always saw my dad um my dad has kind of just been that person that I've always looked up to, he's always been an entrepreneur, and it's just, he's always pushed us. Him and my mom have always pushed us to be our best, uh, mm -hmm. Evo and myself. Um, Evo's my brother. Yeah, we so, had him on the podcast, I think yeah. it was episode four. Um, he's, he's a machine. Yeah, he is, he is. And, <laughs> well, and then trying to live up to that, trying to like be a part <clears throat> or being a fraction of what he is, is just kind of looking up and kind of following in his footsteps, and I think that's what kind of mm. gets me to level up. Right. We always talk about like you want to be you never want to be the smartest person in the room. And I've never felt that like with because he's always by my side. So I'm always trying to like level up to to what he expects of me, what he is, um, what everyone else and, and just even this building. So that's kind of where huh. that's that's pretty cool. It's uh, so you can you kind of came along um, or came into it from from a very um, early age. Now you had you had great examples. <clears throat> Um, for me, for me, it was a little different. I, I did have uh, my mom was a, I mean, she had her own uh, grocery store and, and mm -hmm. you know that sort of thing. So that's kind of what inspired me to take the leap and 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 start betting on myself. But I didn't do it until I hit my twenties. Um, I mean, I can only imagine hustling and doing all kinds all kinds of stuff when I was seven, eight years old. Yeah. It's insane. Um, and and another thing, I mean, you mentioned, for example, looking up and feeling like you you have to level up on a regular basis. I think I think it really comes down to to collaboration yeah. uh, between everybody that's that's in it. For example, mm -hmm. you and your brother, you have that proximity. You're both business partners, yeah. uh, which I want to ask you about that, like the dynamic of of of, um, of family in business, because there's there's this stigma. Um, that no, you don't do business with family or friends. Yeah. I, I find it. I mean, I I, I I think that couldn't be more wrong because yeah. some of the best people that I do business with are you know friends and family. Yeah. Um, but it's um, I want to pick your brain on that. So, um, working with friends and family, um, I've never actually not worked mm -hmm. with my family. Going out of high school, I was working for Papa John's. Papa John's three four months. I don't know how long that was. I realized that that quickly, like the, the corporate, not even corporate, <coughs> but just working for someone else, having to clock in, clock out, that was never for me. Mm -hmm. So out of that, right when I quit Papa John's, um, my dad needed help in his commercial building, or commercial, no, it was his construction company. Mm -hmm. He needed help with that. So I started pre pretty much just being like, I don't like a bookkeeper, like invoicing, kind of like a admin in the office. How old were you? Um... I started at 18. Mm -hmm. um, since then, it kind of just transitioned to like, we ended up getting like more contracts. We ended up contracting with the government, um, didding, doing municipalities in the Phoenix area. And then from then on, it's just Evo came on board and he started building. We both started building, all of us started building this construction company. And eventually we kind of wanted to, <coughs> we kind of left it uh, because it was just, 
it, there's no other way to get my dad out, out of working besides mm. us leaving the company. And we never, we didn't want him to continue working. So, but to back to your question, it was, we never even had a family dinner that wasn't, didn't revolve around like work. Hmm. Does, does that, is that a bad thing or a good thing? I don't know because I don't know any different. Right. Um, but I, what I do know is the fact that we've gotten to where we've gotten because I'm so trustworthy and like so, so open with everything that we do. I know that there's not, I'm never going to, I'm never going to question my family, right? I'm never going to question if Evo's doing the right thing because it's, I know he's doing it a hundred percent for both of us. You he's know where he stands uh, morally and ethically. Yeah. He's never going <coughs> to question me like, Hey, like even like financially, obviously that it's kind of where a lot of partnerships kind of like, I think break, mm -hmm. they start questioning each other's like motives. And I've never, we've never had that. And I think that's a really big plus, but is it a good thing to have family dinners and, and talk about work? I don't know because right, as you evolve, as you grow, like Evo has a family, has a wife now. Um, my mom, she was never in the company or part of the the construction company that we had so i'm pretty sure that they felt left out mm -hmm. um and i so i don't know if that's the right or the wrong way but i don't know any other way so me and him kind of just i feel like we'll always be together and work wise <clears throat> and uh and you guys what do you again going back to <clears throat> to what do you, you guys have done so far well you started jumping into big roles of responsibility early on 18 yeah. and then running books and accounting for for a business it's not i mean it's yeah. not it's not you know peanuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, so that's huge. Um, how did you get to the point where you're at? So I kind of I kind of want to get uh, take uh, get the picture of how it started and how it's going. Um, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened after eighteen and after you left the uh, the construction company? So we left the construction company. Um, <clears throat> obviously, it's not like I wake up today and I'm going to leave the construction company tomorrow. It's a slow transition from one step to another. So it was after construction, we started doing fix and flips. Um, we, I want to say at one point we had a 30, 30 some flips uh, for a single year, uh, even myself. And after, after flipping, we realized that there are some things on, um, on a HUD statement that we neither of us really knew what it was. So he started kind of di digging deep into it. He started asking uh, the title companies, what is this, like, assignment fee that's just listed everywhere, and it's 15, <laughs> 20, 30,000. And it's sometimes double what we're making as flippers, but we're ta it's taking us forever to make this money. And I remember him saying, like, hey, by the way, there's this event um, up in um, Westgate, and it's currently on sale. It's two tickets for one ninety nine. It's probably the best investment we've ever made. Um, <laughs> it was Sean Terry's event, and actually, that's where I first saw you. Yeah. You were uh, you were talking about the disc colors. Yeah, and I that did was a, a that. There. Do you remember <laughs> that? Yeah, that was a good event. Two thousand fifteen was it? Uh, I think it was sixteen, but it might be wrong. Yeah, but it was right then and there that we learned and we got into wholesaling. Mm -hmm. um, after wholesaling, it was just. It was, we thought it was just an extension of flipping. Mm -hmm. We never knew it was an entire business on its own. Yeah. It's, it has nothing to do with it, right? It's, it's like wholesaling is more of a marketing and sales <coughs> versus flipping is construction. Yeah, it's actually hammers and nails. Yeah. And, and, uh, and wholesaling is, I mean, you're, you're, the art of wholesaling is really finding the sellers, which yeah. is not easy, right? Which is marketing. So, yeah, it's marketing. You tap into a marketing company yeah. and, and everything that you have to do behind it. So you you find out this um, this new venture, and then mm -hmm. I remember I remember speaking uh, to Evil for a while after uh, I got off stage that day. We we talked for around twenty thirty minutes or something like that, um, and I remember him because I mean he's 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 <laughs> tall and he's got the kindest eyes and yeah. he has like the coolest demeanor, and we were talking for a while and it's like man it, it, so he he just kind of lingered in 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 my yeah. memory and we yeah. came across. We cross paths like year, years down the road, yeah. but what happened during during that um, that uh, period of time? Because when I saw him and and you guys, uh, like you guys had done a bunch of stuff since that event. Uh, what <coughs> happened? We were we tried to figure out what's the best way to actually lower all of our costs. I think that that's kind of where the whole products and systems that we've developed now kind of came about. It was. There was nothing that felt like it was done right. It felt very mm -hmm. barbaric in our space. Um, 
you had obviously we started with the Excel spreadsheet and we moved into Podio. After Podio, it's like you look back and you're like, wow, that was what I was doing before was ridiculous. Now when I look at what we have now and what we did before, same concept, like that was ridiculous. I remember sending out hundreds of thousands of postcards and they'd come back and I'd pick them up in these like <coughs> huge like mailer bins and then they'd have like wrong address and it'd be stamped right on top of the actual address so you couldn't see it. So what I had to do is <laughs> peel that off of every single postcard and then scan every single postcard to a VA so then they could skip trace it one by one. And then after they skip trace it, they send it to me and then we cold call it. So right, it was this, and from the time we got it to the time that we were making these calls, I wanna say it was over a month. Mm. And it's not even over a month, it was <coughs> it was a dollar to skip trace, yeah. a single, a single en- uh, entry. And it was all the time that it took me and then all the time that it took the VA, I wanna say one, it's not even a lead, it's junk mail that got returned back. I wanna say it right. was like five or six dollars that it was costing us at that point. So, so you started seeing this big, big gap in terms of, uh, of uh, the problem that was happening in the industry, and then you decided to put together a solution for that, or, or how does... Yeah, it just does... trying to figure out what's the most, like, the most <coughs> effective and efficient way to do it, it's, we've always kind of learned, even as a growing up, like, you don't, you try to make, make it to the pa- fastest mm-hmm. path, I can't even say it right now, um, you know what I'm trying to say, though. Yeah. The, the path shortest, of least resistance. Yes, yeah. yes, path of least resistance. <laughs> and um, I felt like there was too many hurdles. So then we started looking into, there's a few platforms out there that provided what we wanted, but they were su- super complicated. Evil being the, the techie and genius person that he is, he was having trouble with it. I was having huge trouble with it. And I'm, I, I love Excel. So looking at these things, and it was, it was very difficult for us to understand it. So he started... Um, we started building this platform and it was, it was the reason we started is because Jesse, our current <coughs> partner now, the third musketeer, um, he, he was like, this is too ridiculous. He always had like evil to do like the Excel spreadsheets with him. And we realized that if he can't do it, even though he's, a, he's brilliant too, like what about everyone else? <laughs> like what about everyone else in the space? So we started making this platform that was super easy. And then from then on, it just, I want to say a transition, it skyrocketed, boomed. It, I don't even know what happened. It just It, it grew ignited. like wildfire to, uh, to yeah. a point. So, so you, you built this thing for yourself uh, yeah. at first? Yeah. Is that what happened? Man, so, some of, the, uh, some of the, uh, the coolest things out there, I mean, they do come because they, you know, owners or, or entrepreneurs have yeah. a problem, and then they dive into fixing that problem for themselves. And then what happens? An opportunity opens up. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, crap, I have this solution for this problem that's pretty massive in this space. Yeah. Um, now, people should, you know, have access to it somehow, some way, and then you monetize. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so that grew, and that, uh, by then you were, uh, so you were already partnered up with uh, with Jesse. We were partnered up for about a year at that point um, when we started, um, yeah, about a year with Jesse when we started building that, um, and it just... And the name of the service? Batch Leads. Batch Leads. Yeah. Which started as? <laughs> uh, batch Lead Stacker? Yes. BatchLeadStacker.com. <laughs> it still redirects, honestly. But, um, okay. yeah, it's Batch Leads just for, <clears throat> for simplicity reasons. Um, and the entire Batch brand, it's kind of everything that we've built together. It's it's for that fact of simplicity. Well, this is this is a cool thing. And I'm, tr- I'm, trying, I'm trying to kind of paint a picture, right? Yeah. So you begin flipping um eggs and then uh, <laughs> and when you're seven and then you move on and then you get into uh the business side of things yeah. and start you know getting into the manage uh, management side of mm-hmm. things with accounting at 18 and then you see an opportunity you tap into that so you're constantly leveling up which is i mean it's it's one of the biggest virtues that any any uh, entrepreneur can have i yeah. think um the uh one the tenacity to not not be held back mm-hmm. when you're when you don't know what's going to happen, but you don't have the uh, the clear yeah. the clarity on the landscape, um, <clears throat> but you you came and then you you, uh, you came up with this solution and then it just started taking off. And I remember when I first heard about the service, I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool. It makes yeah. perfect sense." You uh, developed something else from that, right? Yeah. So tell me about that. How oh. did you scale up that big first uh, software that started you know kicking ass on its own? Um, are we talking just like the list or SMS or? W- well, because you've done a whole bunch of stuff. That. What happened after you created Lead Stacker? You guys created Lead Stacker. Yeah. 
Um, what happened after that? Like, what uh, what told you? I mean, at that point, you can very well sit back and then yeah. just chill for a while, but it's not what happened. It's not, and I don't think that's ever going to happen with us mm -hmm. because we want to make <clears> we <throat> once we saw how what this solved in in our industry, we wanted to solve more more problems, um, and it's things that people even were requesting. It was all right. So what happens? All right, you have your list, you pull your list, you stack your list, right? That's what Batch Leads is for. And then what happens at that point? Then you got to market to it. And it was, I remember it was actually Sean Terry that he kept saying like omni-marketing, omni-marketing. At <coughs> one point I was like, what is this omni-marketing thing that he keeps referring to? And it was, it was a thing I want to say like two years ago, three years ago. And it was text messaging, RVM, um, direct mail and cold calling, right? So it's four, uh, four different marketing platforms. So we started figuring out how to integrate it um, one by one. We currently have SMS in there, so it, it was just making it simple, mm -hmm. getting people to accomplish what they need to accomplish in the most efficient way possible. So once you have that list, now you can text it. Now we have lists that you can pull, right? When you have lists, you can skip trace it, you can stack it, and you can mail it or text it. Within a week or two, you can mail it. Yep. Um, so it's just creating a simplicity for everyone, <coughs> for the user, and I think that's what kind of we're, we're really good at is making everything super simple for everyone. And, and I'm actually a client, so I know firsthand that yeah. uh, the services that you guys are building and putting together mm -hmm. work well. And I'm not just biased because, you know, we're, we're in proximity of the company, but yeah, yeah. it's because it's, it's really a good platform. It's a good service. It's something that's good for the solve or the problem that we all have out there. So it's, 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 it's an amazing awesome. service. It's pretty <laughs> it's badass. An it's an amazing service. No, but the objects <clears> aside, like I remember when we had to actually do it, Everything that you can do within the platform, I remember when you had to do it, it would take me, and I was the person, I was organizing the list, doing everything. I never did it right. And yet, <laughs> and, and yet it still took me like a week to do it. And I always dreaded pulling a new list mm -hmm. because of the amount of work that went into it. Yep. Or you had to stack it, make sure that if you send it to a <clears throat> VA, they don't shift a cell. If you're sorting it, you don't shift a cell. Um, if you're doing any formulas or calculations or pivot tables, you're not. You're not screwing up the entire thing. Yeah, the, the taskiness and the little <coughs> details. I mean, it gets so granular, but it comes to yeah. that point where you have so much um, effort into it, you as an individual, yeah. that it's hard to delegate. It is. Um, I know I went through that when I built the operating system. Yeah. Like, oh, crap, I want to delegate this so bad, but I'm the only one that understands yeah. it. Yeah. And then you have to just kind of slow down and then build it you know, backwards yeah. almost to, to be able to uh, push it forwards. But... Um, <clears throat> So you guys did this, and then you add another service out there, yeah. and then uh, you started growing the company. Over the last year, um, I, I've seen the growth, and it's pretty much exploded like crazy over the last year. So what comes along with that? Uh, I mean, you're having you know to pivot on on yeah. strategies on a regular basis. Uh, you have yeah. hiring that has to come into play at a yeah. much larger scale. You have different problems, more expensive problems. Yeah. Uh, tell me about all that stuff. So once you hit a point where, okay, cool, stuff is working yeah. great as an entrepreneur, what can somebody expect um, on the next, next level kind of stuff? Um, all right, my mom always, and I don't, I don't have kids, so I, I can't relate to this when she said it at the time because she always used to say, your grandpa said, Little kids, little problems. Big kids, big problems. Right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so um, I was never able to relate until this past year. And now like, when you ask that question, that's kind of what, what kind of got me to think about that. It's little business, little problems, even though you think they're like huge, big business, big problems. Um, even though we grew so fast, I also don't think that, that it was fa too fast that we couldn't grow with it. Mm -hmm. um, the part that was, I think, and it's still very difficult, is keeping up with the growth, um, being able to maintain absolutely everything. Um, but the easiest part of it is knowing that kind of who's surrounding us and that someone has had that experience, that, that life lesson, <coughs> that problem. And all it is for us is because we were able and we still are able to build and maintain really good relationships and friendships, I think that's kind of what's, what's made this all work for us because it's – when I have a hiring issue, you're probably my go-to. Like, hey, <laughs> what personality type am I looking for this position, right? If I'm having an issue connecting to, to the customers, or we're, or we need like new ads up and running, we have Brent down the hall, um, Pace and Jamil are on the other side of of town. Yep, one call away. So it's it's knowing that we can lean on these people, and I think that's what's 
kind of helped us keep up with the growth. Hmm. I love it. And you're right. It, it's uh, your network is your net worth, right? Yeah. So how do you how do you deal with I want to tap a little bit into the into the mindset of oh. things. How do you deal Darn. with with uncertainty? Because I know I mean, it's 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 a constant. Yeah. It's something that it's it's, it's the sure. one constant yeah. in, in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Everything is fucking uncertain. Yeah. <laughs> the, mo- the only thing that's certain is uncertainty, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, how I deal with it. Uh I've had I've struggled with this honestly. Um, waking up kind of not knowing where it is, where things are. Especially <clears> honestly, <throat> when we have the whole pandemic and the whole world kind of shut down. Um, I know it hit us. We kind of left the office um, at that time. Evo, Jesse, and myself. We kind of bunkered down here, and we had I want to say three, four days of just strategies. Like, what are we doing if this happens? What are we doing if that happens? And that's all we did. So that kind of that was the moment where I knew that this everything is so uncertain that. It was it was terrifying, right? So that was kind of like, if I can get past this, like I'm sure I can get past anything. Mm-hmm. Um, at least this is where I'm at right now. Um, where I'll be tomorrow, I don't know. So that's kind <laughs> of the thing. Um, but it's also but the, the point part is that, not the point, right? The, <laughs> the point is absolutely not the point. But it's also the fact that it was something that I heard the other day, a um, couple of actually a couple of weeks ago. It's the part that kind of distinguishes us as entrepreneurs and other people that aren't that aren't entrepreneurs right it's the fact that we have the ability to get back up no matter how many times like something or the world or the life like brings us down we have the ability to get back up and remind me what those balls are called where it's like they hit and they just kind of hit across you know what I'm oh the uh, the ones that sit on the desks yes brent has it on his desk yeah i, I, I don't All know right. the name of it but uh, all right yeah. well once you get back up dancing like balls. You're eventually, we'll yeah dancing balls. sure we'll call them dancing balls once yes. you once once one like lifts and starts falling, like right, your life kind of like falls down and it's like it's crumbling and crumbling, and you have this ripple effect in between mm-hmm. happening, and you know that like at any point, once you've like hit your bottom and you have this ripple, eventually, like if you're still working and doing your best, like you'll go back up, mm-hmm. and once you're back up, you'll eventually you'll have that falling down again. But just knowing that you like, somewhere you're in between that ripple and you're you're gonna kind of propel yourself again. <coughs> so. If when I'm uncertain and I'm down there, I'm, I just kind of just do my de- do my best, head down, keep going. Like I'll have I'll have my moment of recovery, I guess again. <laughs> I, I have. Um, I was talking about um, uh, with a with a friend of mine about embracing the suck, oh. and um, and it's not like the the I guess the noblest mo- uh, notion that I that I can subscribe to, yeah. because I mean if there's no suck, it, yeah. it's it's. Well, it's impossible, right? Yeah. First off, but I don't know. I think it's a, like the salt and pepper because then you, when whenever you go through those moments, you mm-hmm. you learn to enjoy the uh, the good stuff. Yeah. And otherwise, it'd be all just bland. Yeah. But um, it builds. You know, one it builds backbone, it builds character, and then it um, <clears throat> if you have the awareness that you're going through, which you do, uh, that you're going through that stage, and you stick to um to uh doing the you know taking the yeah. the action steps and and doing whatever yeah. whatever is on your on your track you handle it uh you know you're gonna you're, you're gonna come out yeah you know well on the other side uh, one of the things that happens often is that people get into that little not even not even the, on the ripple effect yeah it, they they're going on the downhill people freak out and then they drop their their dreams of, of independence and they move out yeah. and then you know get back into the 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 nine to five, and if I mean it's fine if that's you know truly what somebody wants, mm-hmm. but um, my issue is, uh, and it's an issue. Um, one of many. It is, yeah, one of many. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it, when when somebody is, is stuck on that rut mm-hmm. and they won't get out, um, and they're always complaining about it. Like take the leap, take the action. I mean, if it's in you, if you have that fire, if you have that desire, I mean, go for it. What else have we got? Like, what else are we supposed to be doing? But again, yeah, no. that's where where you're comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you're comfortable, like getting put down and then getting back up. Versus, there's so many people that are are terrified and <clears throat> and they don't know how to get back up. Which I know we've had, we've all had like experienced good and bad in our lives. But just getting bouncing, mm-hmm. bouncing back up instead of kind of getting up and just dragging everything along with you. It's getting up and letting it go and continuing and and trying. If it's if it's something new, try something new. If it's not what continue what you're doing but that's where our power i think is that's our superpower 
And uh, I agree. I, I totally agree with that. I think uh, it's um, it's also in, in the uh, in the sense of discipline, right? Self accountability is one of the biggest things. Mm -hmm. um, I am I am not accountable on a lot of things, but there's a few that I do. You yeah. know that I, like, I'll hold myself uh, in yeah. accountable for. Um, and one of them is it's my personal growth because I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And um, but it's um, it's having those disciplines in place really that get you through the. Uh, through the you know through the shitty spots, mm -hmm. it's okay. I know that it's I'm not you know things are not going great, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep at yeah. it because you build that discipline, you build that um, that uh, that habit, right? And um, and eventually, you know the cards are gonna are gonna turn. Yeah. And, and, there's and no other way. There's no other way. You're already walking in that direction, yeah. and there's no other way. Yeah, the point is not the point. The point is not the point. So um, yeah, I love it. Um, how do you deal with, for example, hiring when you got to hi uh, hire for for new spots or new mm -hmm. positions, new places that uh, you need to cover? How do you do that in, in a in an industry that you're pretty much building as you go? Because you're you don't have a business model. Somebody can open up a restaurant, yeah, and they may have a blueprint to kind of go mm -hmm. off of. Uh, your business is different because yep. you're tapping into different uh, verticals. Yep. So how does that work? How does that work? <clears throat> um, I can easily say recently we've hired an HR, and that's probably been oh, it's, it's been life changing for me honestly. Uh, just in, in 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 the day to day operations, I've been able to step out of that. But before that, like, because she handles all that, mm -hmm. and and before that, it was just very difficult. Even now, it's still very difficult because again, you said we don't have set operations, we don't have. What does a person that that I need, right, in this box, whatever me, if it's an acquisitions or sales or service uh, or support, like what does that person actually do when you've never done it? Like, right. You don't you don't know what they what's, what's their job description. What are you holding them accountable for? Um, where I think we've been very good is we've had people travel with us along the entire path and journey that we've had. We've had people five or six years now. Mm -hmm. um, they've gone through <coughs> everything from like being cold callers to acquisitions to um, lead managers to dispo, everything in between, right? So it's those people that we've been able to plug in, see how that operates, and then we leave them in that spot, and then we build a second person on top of them, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. Um, so it's kind of like it's trial and error. But also knowing, and something that Jesse's very good at, is building out our culture. And I think it's the fact that we're building this culture, and it's hmm. people. the people that we're hiring, they know that there's going to be change. They know that a lot is expected of them, but they also know that they have a lot of opportunity. So I think that's where we've able to, been su to be successful, because we, we hire someone, and then a month later, we're like, you know what, what you're doing is great, but we don't need you in this position, because we no longer need you in this position. And we're gonna move you. We're gonna just gonna your everything still stays the same except your job title and what maybe what you're doing. And we're gonna move you to a different part of the company. But when we do that, what we see is a person is happier. They mm -hmm. excel at it. Um, it's it's them building the company with us. Right seats, we, uh, yeah. right butts in the right seats, right? Yeah. And there was a picture that actually recently saw, and it was a conversation I had recently with my friends. We all <coughs> before. Or I just the traditional leadership or boss role is right. You're cracking the whip, like you you sit oh, above, yeah. you sit above, and everyone else is below you. And then the second picture is where the leader is like tugging on that rope with everyone else, right? So it's that's that's the leadership that we we want and we need, and we I guess we are. Um, we look to to lead our people, and we'll do the groundwork, we'll do the grind with them, um, and I think that's where how we're able to build these these great companies and and just people honestly what evil gets here what four in the morning um you know that's that's pushing it that's if he oversleeps okay yeah <laughs> yeah if he's on a lazy day yeah, yeah. um and then the last one of you guys leaves at five yeah um after the team is left so yeah. you guys are leading through example and i think there there's a difference there's a big difference between um putting in the hours as a business owner and then leading by example and actually being part of the team. Yeah. Um, and I think you guys do a very good um, a job at that second one about you know, at leading by example. Um, I've, I've, uh, I've seen you guys, I've seen Jesse, I've seen Evil get into it and then just, do, you know, still handle the tasky stuff. Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of business owners uh, think, Oh, you know what? I'm the visionary of the company. Yeah. And then they, they wear that hat and that's it. Um, too good. But it's, it's not, I really don't think that um, that that creates uh, that bond. 
Yeah. It's at the end of the day, people want to feel like they matter, right? Uh, and that's employees. That's and everybody. That's, that's everybody. Thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, and they they also want to feel that uh, that um, that human connection and human capital is one of the one of the biggest things that's under underlooked um, in in businesses uh, now. Why? Because most uh, companies go to a restaurant, go to a, you know just yeah. any traditional you know type of of business, and it's it's numbers, it's payrolls, it's people clocking in, people yeah. clocking out, and um, and I, I think the the uh, things are shifting where where people care more about where they work and the impact that they're making. Of course, financials play a big role yes. into it, and you know nobody's gonna be happy mm. if they're still in survival mode, right? But if uh, financials are not the only thing that that um, that will that will determine whether you know whether or not you know yeah. somebody stays. And I think you guys do a great job at um, at putting all that stuff together, meaning the culture, giving the 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 sense of um, of meaning to the business, to the company, to the stuff that you guys are working on and solving, um, and also on a you know that one to one basis, which is yeah. it's pretty amazing. So well, if you actually th think about it, the majority of us, the majority of people, on, on average, work forty hours minimum, right? Like we have that forty hour. Um, it's it's a minimal, and forty hours you spend like. That's more than half of the time that you're awake anyways. So for, if you're going to work and you're not happy, whether you go yeah. home with whoever you're at with and a significant, you spell, you need to be happier, I feel like, at work than you <laughs> need to be at home to an extent because you spend more time with these people than you do with whoever else outside. So the fact that I get to go to work and I get to hang out with my brother, I get to hang out with my best friends, um, just to see everyone on the other side of the, um, of the building and, you, uh, Brent, just being able to hang out with you guys, it it makes the the the, the <laughs> task and the, the sometimes the tedious things that we have to do it makes it so much better. It, it, you it's go, it's you a lot to, more bearable. You go, <laughs> it's not even bearable. It's like you go to work with your best friends and you're gonna see yeah. them at the playground. That's kind of what it feels like sometimes when I'm in the office, especially when we're <laughs> able to get more, even a few more in the office. It, it feels like a playground. It, it does. And you know what? It's not just for the sake of, um, of uh, and this is how it works for me. Um, when I'm in the office, just ideas, fl I mean, ideas flow. It's, it, there's, there's more interaction. There's more, you know, stuff going on, right? But it's, it's a different mindset that I'm, that I'm able to tap into. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's a collective uh, of, of uh, you know, anybody that's in your space. I've, uh, I've mentioned that to a, to a, uh, you know, multiple people. If you don't have that space in your industry, if you don't have that um, um, you know, a mastermind or, or a group of people yeah. to go to, create one, make one, sit down, find like-minded individuals, and then sit down with them and start creating this this little you know bond. Yeah. Why? Because you're gonna come across solutions a lot faster. Yeah. Um, whenever you're going through the you know through the trenches, you know where to tap into. Yeah. Um, and you're going to feel like you're in a playground. You're going to feel like you're just, you know, hanging out. And honestly, the uh, the uh, the biggest leaps um, career-wise, professional-wise, and, and financial and business-wise and everything have been over conversations uh, where it feels like we're not doing anything. Yeah. But that's when you're when you're operating from that space. Yeah, it's honestly, it's it's kind of like what Brent, or, uh, Brandon, Brandon Simmons started. Oh, yeah, Go-Giver? Yeah, if it wasn't... Honestly, if it wasn't for that mastermind, I don't know if we'd be all where we're at because he's the one that kind of brought us together and made it feel like a playground. Yeah. And it's it, <laughs> it, it wasn't real to me yeah. that, uh, uh, you know, just competitors sitting in the yeah. same room were willing to sh uh, exchange ideas. Yeah. And like, okay, what's working for you? Wh what? Yeah. And it yeah, was, I I'll think everyone you. was hesitant, right, in yeah. the beginning. Like, everyone was hesitant to share. And, like, it's... <clears throat> You share once, and then you're like, oh, like that little thing that Raphael said, I'm going to go implement it in my business. And then you turn around, and you're like, wow, that saved me X amount of dollars, X amount of time. It, whatever, created this, made life easier. And the second time, you're like, you're more willing to share a little bit more. So it kind of like was this like, like I feel like we trained each other to be it open to if that almost, makes sense. It, it, it almost makes you want to level up so you can teach people other yeah. stuff. Like, all right, here you look, look at what I found out now. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, I think Pace calls it the the giving high or something like that. You get like, you get a high from, from from giving and connecting and contributing, yeah. and it's something completely different to to what I was used to in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's something that I I I like I know can be 
taking into every single different industry. Yeah. I mean, take it to insurance, take it. I mean, if we're doing it in real estate, yeah. hell, which is, I mean, if not one of the most competitive you know, and industries. In yeah, and yeah, exactly. Like the, the, the most competitive place in the most competitive industry, and it's mm -hmm. happening. I mean, of course it can happen in restaurants. It can happen, yeah. you know, in whatever you plug it into. But, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's coming in from that space, that space of, um, of wanting to, to uh, create from a, from a space of giving. I mean, I think that that's what, uh, what makes a lot of the magic happen. And it's exactly what you guys are doing in, in yeah. your business. So. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, always, it's always collaboration over competition. Yep, I love that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so um, you uh, you guys are, are crushing it in in, uh, in, uh, in your businesses mm -hmm. and and uh, doing all kinds of wonderful things. Now, on a personal level, what would be uh, say three things that you think um, entrepreneurs need to focus on? Darn it! <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for this. All right, uh, three <laughs> things. Um, huh. All right. Three things that <coughs> entrepreneurs need to focus on. Always growing. Um, it's probably, whether it is a self-help book or a business help book, what, what I do is I rotate them. Um, I do one self-help, one business-related book. Um, hmm. And it's just, I'm able to grow, I feel like, a little bit more. Um, a, I'm better, able to create better relationships and friendships. B, I'm able to, th that extends to even to people that we work with, employees, um, everyone else. And then also the the business books, it's it's able, it's giving me ideas, um, giving getting me from point A to point C a little bit faster, and mm -hmm. sometimes being able to skip that B. Um, so it gives me power, right? Knowledge is power. So I think that's one of the the biggest things. Um, second is. Being able to sometimes just put something out there, and I know some you struggle, <laughs> you struggle being able to put something out there, even if it's not perfect. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. So oh, and yeah. it's not just you. Like I'm not trying to pick, but it's all of us, <laughs> right? Like we want to make it perfect before we put it out. <clears throat> it's prog progress over perfection, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's something that I feel like we all struggle with, but we need to get it out there because once you get it out there, it's still not going to be perfect. It's perfect to you, but it's not perfect to me. Right. Right. We've. I've looked at your operating system. You're like, what do you think? And then you're like, I it's thought perfect. I thought I had it dialed in, and then you yeah. broke it down and like you tore it up. Yeah, which is which is perfect for you. I know, and I know yeah. it's painful, but it was no, it was perfect th that's, for you. That's that's the magic of yeah. it, though. And one thing that I'm adopting right now from uh, 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 Tom uh, Tom uh, Crow taught me mm -hmm. this is it's massive imperfect action. Yeah, and just take massive imperfect action. And I'm getting better at that, um, but I, I'll I'll build it up or I'll create something to where I'm you know seventy yeah. percent, eighty percent comfortable with it, and then I release it. I say, okay, boom, here we go. Yeah. Um, because at that point, it's 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 about as much as I've been able to do, and this is me, mm -hmm. uh, in theory, right? Everything yeah. else is gonna you have to apply it. You have to and get feedback. Yeah, That's get feedback from it. Get different perspectives. Uh, I know, for example, that uh, the stuff that I've, I've put together. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to dial it in the way that I have, and it wouldn't be working the way that it is now if yeah. I hadn't, uh, you know, asked several people, including you, to break it down and then just tell me everything that was wrong with yeah. it. Yeah, and it's painful. It's painful because yeah, it's your child. Yeah, and someone's like, like no. just tearing it apart. Yeah, and you're it's just like, like, but no, but it's yeah, like you have an ugly kid. That's it's yeah, pretty it's much what somebody's telling you when you well, <laughs> when they're when, when they're judging your product. Absolutely, and, <laughs> but, and but I've it takes gotten, that. It, I know, and I've gotten to that. Sometimes I get people that that are just posting. On social media and they're like oh this is wrong with it that's wrong with it i wish that it could do this and in my head i'm just like you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i'm like it's perfect and then you step back from like because it is your child and like you step back you're yeah. like, all right well if they're having this issue then they're now i know yeah. then someone else is having this issue so let's figure out how to make it better but the initial reaction is yeah. like you don't know any better like it's perfect. Yep. Like, that's just kind of like what it is. Even, even taking it at a uh, – and, and right now, for example, we're talking out in the open, right? When yeah. you post on social media, when you post on – I don't know, put up a video on something, it's something that I'm going through on a, on a regular basis. I still get you know anxious every time I'm about to record a podcast. Oh, and really? I've done a whole bunch of them, yeah. Really, because it took us like 30 minutes to get started? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> My fault. Yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> so – uh, but it also happens – uh, inside uh, companies, yeah. right? When when um, I've seen a lot of hesitation in in, tra in the in the release of control. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the it's one of the big things that at the end of the day, if you're not releasing control over um, 
your business as you start growing, as you start scaling, or as, as you start getting more traffic, more people, more clients um, into it, you become a bottleneck. Yeah. And it's the same thing with ideas and holding on to them until they're perfect. Yeah. They're never going to be perfect. Yep. Um, analysis paralysis is going to it's going to just make bottlenecks left and right. And, and if um, if we don't let go of those or delegate those um, or create systems and processes to to cover that stuff, like it, it will stop your growth. It will stop your profitability and yep. it will break the company. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yep. Um, so <clears throat> third one. Nice. Yes. All right. <laughs> um, third one. Third one would be writing out those ripples. Mm -hmm. writing, writing out that ripple effect um and also something that just on a personal level that i've learned recently is take it'll take a minimum of three days to kind of think a decision a, a big impactful decision in your life take at least three days to think it over before you do something right because mm -hmm. i'm i'm trigger happy i pull the trigger and then i figure out what happens yeah. right like i <laughs> It's kind of like you just want to get it done. Shoot yeah. the name later, yeah. Yeah, like you kind <laughs> of and, – and the thing I always used to say is ask for forgiveness, not for permission. Well, just wait a little bit longer to ask for that <laughs> forgiveness at least first. Um, so the thing that I've implemented recently in my life is wait at least three days before, like, actually making a decision. Um, think it over – a big decision that, that's impactful in your life and that's going to impact other people. Um, decisions like are you going to go shopping today or are you going to go to the gym? Right, not, not important, but um, – are you gonna make a huge impactful decision, whether personal or business? Take take a little bit of time, think it over. Um, <clears throat> I, well, I mean, I think that's huge, especially when you're thinking of, of stopping yeah. or quitting. Or, yeah, that's the part. Or, yeah, it's like, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna go back to my you know my my security. Yeah. Um, nine to five or whatever that is, and um, and then throwing everything out the window. Yeah, and then I think that that also allows you to be able to ride that ripple effect a mm -hmm. little bit better. Um, before you you kind of start going up again and i've seen at least in the past month i like i can't really speak for longer than that but in the past month of i've oh, a little bit longer i've done that and i've seen huge changes even in some of like my friendships um kind of just sit instead of sitting there and like blowing up about something ridiculously <laughs> stupid and pointless or quitting on an idea um it's huge so that would be my three personal which every personal i think for for a lot of people especially entrepreneurs, personal mm -hmm. professional. Love nice. it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Um, so um, give us, I don't know, one book that somebody can uh, read that's going to be amazing. Go-Giver. Go-Giver go chain, yeah. Go-Giver, and it's, it's the book yeah. I'm always going to recommend. Um, Go-Giver has changed, has changed a lot and put us, I think, where we are today. <laughs> um, but if it was a different book and if I had to give, give a second book, it's Ego is the Enemy. Mm. Uh, Brent recommended it in one of his podcasts um, and then I was like yeah it's, it's okay I've heard it and then someone else mentioned it and then I heard it I think three times in like one week and I was like it has to be like it, it's <laughs> meant to sign. be it's meant to be like I need to read this book um, the book is hitting you over the head it is it's <laughs> it's being begged to like being read so yeah. I ended up reading that book and it was definitely things and it kind of it's a part of the reason that I'm starting to do the three day thing it's it wasn't in the book but it was just kind of let ego like don't make decisions based on your ego mm -hmm. and we all have it all of ours is huge <laughs> yeah absolutely huh? and and uh, i think almost recognizing it is yeah. it's one of the biggest like challenges yeah like understanding what's coming from ego and then what's coming from self yeah it's two so different total things th those two books are my 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 favorite all-time books uh, I ryan no holiday idea. yes yes it ryan is holiday, yes, yeah. It is. yeah i read it yeah Okay, cool. Uh, if you were walking down the street and yep. you ran into your 17-year-old self, oh, what would you tell that kid? Uh, huh, what would I tell my 17-year-old <laughs> self? Get back up faster. Mm. There's, there's situations that like I look back, I'm like, yeah, that was nothing. Like, it's not a life impactful decision. Um, and you kind of like you sit and you dwell in it and you we, we all overthink things um but just getting back up faster dust it off and keep going dust it off and keep yeah. going just dust it off that's nothing else to, it's not that difficult we make our lives a lot more difficult than i think they should be even work lives and um i think just dust it off and keep going 
I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, Annie, for, for spending the time and then dropping golden nuggets on us. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for having me. Honestly, it's been a blast. <laughs>